Hi, thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Michal Hrušecký. I work at Tourist Project in CZNIC. And uh, yes, this talk will be in English. And uh, yeah, the uh, goal of this talk is uh, we meet after a year. And uh, I want to speak about uh, latest development in our project and also show you the newest thing that we've got, this one here. We will get to it. And yeah, let's talk what we've been up to, what we are going to do, and I hope to answer some of the most asked questions about uh, what we are going to do next. So uh, what we did recently, we released some new devices. OK. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, one thing that uh, we announced uh, last month. It's not uh, really new. Uh, for a long time, since we launched uh, Omnia, our uh, still flagship, uh, we offered the opportunity to plug in LTE, to do some backup connectivity, to connect when you are in remote places. And it was kind of popular use case. So popular that we actually have uh, business customers that are requiring just that configuration. And people are frequently asking about that. Uh, we were always treating it a little bit uh, like something extra. If you want to do it, uh, do it. It's possible, technically possible. Hardware can handle it. But uh, our software support was uh, not so great. So we created a variant of Omnia that uh, will come with uh, everything you need. So it contains a uh, category 6 modem. For LTE, it contains the antennas. Uh, typical use case for this device is uh, if you have a small office or something like that uh, where you cannot afford being offline. So you have your main connectivity, fiber, or something uh, less up to date, some Ethernet cables out of uh, the wall. And uh, you want to be secure if uh, there is uh, some event in the neighborhood, somebody is digging a hole, somebody is stealing the cables, and stuff like that. So if your main connectivity goes down, it will switch over to LTE, and you can still work. It will be slower. It will be fallback. But uh, it's there, and you can get some work done even over that. So that's the main use case that we are trying to address with that. And uh, hardware-wise, as I said, uh, it's uh, well supported. Uh, Software-wise, uh, it's uh, worse, but it's getting much better. Uh, uh, over the time, we added uh, support in our updater to automatically detect uh, what uh, USB devices and PCI devices are there in the Omnia, and based on that, it can automatically install corresponding drivers that works for some time already for the LTE cards. Uh, what we added recently is uh, adding additional software, like uh, GUI for configuring the LTE. And uh, in um, upcoming Twiz OS uh, 643, we are adding a script uh, that will also automatically configure the LTE card if it doesn't require PIN. If it requires PIN, uh, you still have to go to Lucy for now, but uh, we have uh, support for LTE modems in Reforis uh, in progress. We are working on it, and it should be coming in upcoming releases. Uh, What's uh, part of the 643 is uh, automatic setup of LTE. So it will automatically configure the card. So system will recognize it, connect to the internet. And also there is uh, some default setup of uh, M1 package 
which uh, handles the fallback. So even if the wire doesn't disappear and it just stops working, it will detect that and switch over to the fallback, uh, fallback uh, connectivity. Uh, I wrote there that uh, RC is uh, out since today. It is uh, still not yet true. We discussed that we will release it today in the morning, but uh, latest nightly build didn't look that great, so we are waiting for the new build and we will release it in the afternoon if everything goes well. But uh, I was writing the slides yesterday, so that's the disadvantage of uh, writing slides too much upfront. And yeah, as I said, uh, in the future, there will be nice integration in Refoy, so you wouldn't have to go to Lucy, and uh, the whole process will be much simpler. And now to the um, main thing, that's this box here. To is Omnia Enterprise. Uh, we've been talking about uh, what we are going to do to replace uh, our slowly aging uh, Twist Omnia, which is uh, still more powerful than quite some routers out there. Uh, last year, I was saying that uh, we have some uh, scheme. Um, we have uh, we have uh, quite a good idea of what we are going to do, and we hope that we will have something by the end of the year. It didn't happen. Uh, we actually uh, found something even better and decided to switch to something completely different uh, with uh, better uh, lead times and uh, better support. So we had to kind of start from the scratch. And we did it. And we now actually have uh, first prototypes that we are still working on. But the prototype is here. Uh, we are doing some tests and hardware support. We know that this is not the f last prototype. Uh, so far, we haven't found any serious issues. We found just uh, some small things that were easily workaroundable. Uh, the board that uh, my colleagues are working on at office already has a few wires uh, extra in various directions. And uh, we hope to get it working soon, and we expect that uh, it will be on the market in next year, probably something around the summer. Uh, we already have some uh, pre-orders from our business partners, so we know that it will be a successful device already. And we hope that it will be not just for the business partners that uh, already uh, expressed their interest, but uh, that it will be interesting for other people as well. We expect that the uh, retail price will be below $1,000. And now, what it is, actually? It's, uh, again, uh, powerful hardware. Uh, we originally wanted to replace uh, our Twist Omnia, but uh, we again overdid it and did something much more powerful. Not just a little refresh, but uh, we have uh, eight uh, 1.8 gigahertz uh, cores, RMV8, and we have uh, 10 uh, gigabit uh, we have six 10 gigabit ports, SFP plus. And uh, one of the features uh, is that uh, we put uh, RAM modules into SODIMM slots, so you can replace them and upgrade it up to 64 gigs. So uh, in the morning, we kept it closed uh, to make it surprise, uh, so people could speculate whether there is something inside, actually. Uh, so now I'm opening it here, and you can see that there is a, really a device, some board. Uh, it can also blink, but we didn't bring power source. And I, uh, we have uh, just prototypes yet, so 
I don't want to break it because they are really rare. Mm. And uh, my colleagues will probably break, break some of them during uh, various testings. So uh, here are the slots. You can put uh, various modules inside. And uh, it has uh, several. Uh, actually, that's better, right? Uh, there will be USB 3.0. There will be this uh, uh, SFP plus cages. Um, all of those cages goes directly to the CPU. So uh, there is uh, no switch. But the CPU can actually uh, has uh, support for hardware acceleration of, uh, of bridging. So if you want to put them into bridge, uh, CPU can offload it to the hardware acceleration so it should be fast enough. We have uh, M2 slots for Wi-Fi, uh, for LTE or 5G, and we have also M2 slots for NVMe if you need additional storage. Uh, over the time, uh, what uh, turned out to be a really great decision was that we decided uh, when we were doing uh, twist mocks we decided to put the main storage on micro SD card, and we think that it was a good choice because, uh, and we are doing it again in um, Twist Omnia Enterprise. Reason is uh, it's easy to replace it and easy to change, change it for something uh, bigger. Because yes, uh, our OS is quite small and is uh, more than fine with eight gigs of storage, but then you have people that uh, want to run databases on that, uh, want to lock everything, and yes, uh, the ideal use case is to use NVMe for that. But uh, yeah, the easiest one is to replace the SD card, and if you don't care about uh, throughput on the I/O, then it's good enough. Uh, yeah, one of the interesting parts is that uh, CPU is not on the up of the board, but it's uh, from below. And again, uh, as uh, in our other routers, we are using the whole chassis as a, as a cooler. So basically, the heat from the CPU is distributed to the to the sides, where we have. Uh, these big pieces of aluminium. Uh, for the SFP cages, uh, as you can see on the uh, top deck, uh, we have this uh, U profile, and that's because it will touch uh, the top of the SFP cages to uh, conduct the heat away from SFP cages. Those uh, 10 gig ports can uh, heat up quite a bit. So everything should be passive. Uh, we are still about to do the real tests and try to burn it. But uh, according to all the numbers that we run, it should be fine. Uh, the idea is that uh, this uh, chassis fits into one U, into the rack. We also have extra um, uh, extra part that can uh, come from either side and will make it, uh, it's actually possible to mount it into rack. But if you don't have a rack, uh, you can still use it just like this and put it on the table. Uh, yeah, so what about uh, Omnia? Yeah, we are still thinking about, uh, yeah, we started with this as a replacement for Omnia, but uh, we ended up with something much more powerful and also kind of more expensive than Omnia. Uh, we are still searching for something to replace Omnia uh, while uh, keeping uh, mainly the price and uh, improving performance just a little bit. We are trying not to go overboard like this. 
again. But uh, yeah, what we are looking for is to upgrade uh, the CPU to 64-bit. Uh, everybody seems to be dropping 32-bit uh, support. And uh, we would uh, like to keep all the functionality that uh, current Omnia has. So that means uh, all the versatility and uh, also have at least uh, one two and a half gig port. Uh, of course, we would like to have more than one two and a half gig port and it would be nice to have a port that would be faster than uh, two and a half gig, but uh, that depends on the final selection of uh, SOC that will be available and that will actually work. We are also looking into Wi-Fi 7 solutions, but uh, so far there is only a few of them available at the market and they are really, really overpriced. Uh, they cost more than this. And, uh, but we expect that the situation will change rapidly and uh, there will be more modules available soon because, yeah, nowadays there's just a uh, few vendors uh, offering uh, Wi-Fi 7 cards, but uh, it's just a matter of time before other vendors will jump on the board. So, uh, what's going? Uh, what's uh, what's coming in OS side? Uh, I was already talking about the next uh, minor release that will bring uh, better support for LTE. We are still working on Twist OS 7. Uh, the main goal is to upgrade to newer OpenWRT. Uh, it's uh, currently being tested in uh, HBL branch. You can switch to it and you can help us test it. What we are doing uh, is uh, testing it, uh, yeah, basically all the time, and trying to fix uh, the last uh, errors that we see to make the transition as smooth as possible. Uh, we decided that with 7.0, we will not do any other features. It will be just a bump in OpenWRT version. There's uh, many tempting enhancements that we could do, like switch to NF tables and uh, put, put in some more reference changes and other features. We are trying to stay away from that and try to make it a really simple and boring release. Uh, we also prepared for something uh, that we interact internally call, call staged updates. Uh, we basically want to divide uh, routers into various uh, series and release this uh, big update uh, over the time. So first, uh, just some of the routers will get it on the day one, others will get it on day two, and gradually it will come up. So. If we miss something, we will still have uh, some time to fix it before other people will migrate to that. After we migrate to Twist OS 7, um, we will start doing all the other minor migrations like NF tables and add other features. But uh, 7.0 will be just bump in OpenWRT version, nothing more. Yeah, and OpenWRT actually released a new version already. Uh, so we will start working on uh, Twist OS 8 after we release Twist OS 7. Currently, not our focus at the moment. We are focusing on the next maintenance release and on migration to V7. Uh, it will come to it at some point in time. But uh, not our focus at the moment, so if you try it, good for you, but uh, I wouldn't recommend it. And uh, we are fixing it only occasionally. After we release uh, Twist OS 7, 
we will start working on Tourist OS 8. Uh, one last update about uh, Tourist Sentinel. If you, if you remember, it's our security research program where we collect data from uh, minipods that are running on the routers that we deployed. Uh, last year, we started publishing uh, monthly security report uh, where you can read uh, all the statistics for the previous month, and we are trying to provide some context for the data so you can see what's been going on uh, in our minipods and what uh, the attackers have been focusing on. Uh, we also started talking to other people about uh, running uh, those uh, minipods and the whole Sentinel ecosystem outside of our routers. Our first choice was uh, ISPs, and we actually have uh, some uh, pilot program uh, with one of them where they already deployed uh, minipods uh, into their network and we are able to use their unused uh, IP addresses to collect more data. We are also working on uh, extending our dynamic firewall to make it possible to run it elsewhere. It's easy to run it on normal Linux PC and it's easy to run it to other on other routers. But uh, when we were talking with these ISPs, uh, they asked us to support uh, Cisco and Juniper. And uh, yeah, we tried that and we figured out that uh, although they have a documentation, it doesn't really correspond to what the router is doing and the API is very difficult to work with. And if you want to connect to it, you have to downgrade all OpenSSL libraries so you are able to support these old ciphers that are considered dangerous for a long time. So we found out that we don't want to interact with them directly, but luckily there is a solution. CZNIC has uh, this great software that is called BERT, and it can uh, talk uh, not only BGP, but, uh, open, uh, but also some other protocols, and one of them is uh, suitable for distributing firewall rules. So we, we think that we will be able to avoid uh, Juniper and Cisco by going through BERT and let BERT handle all those weird devices, and we will just talk to somebody sensible. Uh, so we have our first, uh, first minipods running outside of our routers. Uh, we now want to uh, push this concept and uh, test it more. And once we uh, make it work with ISPs, because it's easy, because that's just one guy or few guys to talk to, they can work with us uh, really closely and we get feedback uh, really fast, and uh, it's easy to debug. Then we will extend it to everybody and to all the average users. So at some point in the future, you will be able to run minipods and contribute data with your own servers as well. So thank you for your attention, and if you've got some questions, Feel free to ask. If not right here, or if you are shy in this uh, big audience, you can visit our booth and talk to us there. Okay? Yes. Uh, just a little question. How many of uh, these enterprise uh, thingies uh, do fit in uh, one U, uh, one uh, beside another? Um, we are currently, we are aiming at one. <laughs> uh, I don't think that, uh, I think it's uh, too wide to fit two side by side, 
but it's actually not that deep, so it could actually fit from the other side as well. Unless you have this uh, small rack that is not deep enough. But standard rack, I think it could probably fit two, two of them from each side, or one, one of them from each side. Are you playing some high availability in the software? Um, high availability in the software depends of of what. Uh, basically, we are running. Uh, yeah, multiple uplinks and multiple firewalls. So then, if some of these machines fail, so another can take uh, all the load. Something like that. Uh, for multiple uh, for multiple uplinks, there is uh, this M1 software that I was talking about uh, earlier. That bas what basically it's uh, kind of simple. It uh, basically just pings over all the interfaces, and when it detects uh, that packet loss is uh, bigger than something, it will switch over to the other line, or you can define more complex rules. It's uh, basically some front end and a uh, few scripts over policy based routing. Apart from that, uh, you can, yeah, it's running curl Linux distribution, so you can install anything you want. So uh, if, you, if you are running some high availability on, uh, on big computers, you can get it there. I, I meant that I don't want to DIY it, so if the software will contain some high availability, if I, for example, want to upgrade the machine, so one will upgrade, and meantime the other will take all the response for all the traffic, and then I can upgrade the second one, so I will have zero doubt time. That's, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting, it's not there yet. Uh, interesting suggestion. Uh, as I said, uh, what we are currently working on is better to integrate this uh, M1 solution that will provide fallback for the connectivity. Uh, yeah, interesting suggestion. We will think about that, and we will see. Depends also on on how many people would actually use that. But uh, yeah, as we are aiming with this uh, to a little bit different segment than uh, we used to be before. These questions will come and we will have to address them somehow. So we will see d uh, what will come from dis discussions with other partners. Uh, just a quick, quick question. Do you plan to release Tourist OS 7 and possibly 8 also for Tourist 1.0 still? Uh, Tourist OS 7, we will definitely release it uh, for Tourist uh, 1. Point something. Uh, for those who doesn't know, that's the first router that we made 10 years ago. We are still releasing updates for that. And uh, Tourist OS 8, uh, I think that uh, we will still get support for that. I think we are still building it and it still works, but uh, I'll be honest, uh, those 10 years old routers are getting harder and harder to support and probably in few years we will have to stop supporting them because uh, currently we are uh, support for this architecture was dropped from GCC so we have to uh, use all the GCC to be able to compile it and uh, yeah support for this particular hardware is uh, getting dropped everywhere. So at some point, we wouldn't be able to compile packages for that anymore. So yeah, we will still support it uh, definitely for the next year, probably even year after. But uh, yeah, uh, if it takes you some time to make a decision about your next device, it's maybe you should start thinking about it, but maybe we will get a uh, next generation of Omnia before we will drop uh, support for Twist OS, uh, for Twist uh, 1.0. Yes, and thank you too, thank you for questions, thank you for answers. It's lunch time, so yeah. yes, enjoy the food and enjoy your lunch. meat after that, thank, thank you. you.